Do animals and birds go to heaven? And our dearly beloved pets that have died, that we love so dearly, that are like family members, and that we care for with all our hearts? If you've lost a beloved pet that you dearly loved, that you've had for years and has been your sidekick and your best friend, then you may be wondering, will they be in heaven? Will they go to heaven and be with me? And the answer I tell you is yes, my friend. In the beginning, in the beginning, God created the animals and the birds before he created humankind. In Genesis chapter 1, Starting in verse 19, it says, And there was evening and there was morning, a fourth day. Then God said, Let the waters teem with swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth in the open expanse of the heavens. And God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves, with which the waters swarmed after their kind, and every winged bird after its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, a fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures after their kind, cattle and creeping things, and beasts of the earth after their kind. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after their kind, and the cattle after their kind, and everything that creeps on the ground after its kind. And God saw that it was good. And then man was created. So God put the birds and the animals and all of the fish of the sea here first so that by the time he created mankind this earth would be blessed full of his creation. After mankind came into the Garden of Eden by God's creation and sinned against God and the curse of death came upon not only Adam and Eve but upon all of God's creation and the earth was cursed with a curse so that's why all these bad things happen to good people. And what do we read about the animals suffering under this curse until the redemption of mankind? We find this in the book of Romans in chapter 8. So this is the best verse that reveals that the creature shall be delivered from the bondage of death. The following verse in Romans 8 is the one that comforted me when I lost my dearest pet. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption, or death, into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves, groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. So because the animals in all creation was subjected to the curse from what happened in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve, and the curse of death came upon all uh, every living being, then when we get our glorified bodies and the redemption is complete, God restores us to himself it takes us back into a Garden of Eden-like state. So every creature, every bird, every animal, every creeping thing that he created will be delivered from death and have eternal life in the kingdom of God. And we can comfort each other because this is the greatest blessed hope that, that we'll be resurrected if we die and that 
And then, of course, those who never have to die because the Lord will catch away the living believers that remain over. So we can comfort one another with these words. Also remember that Simon Peter was given the vision of the great sheet in which was let down from heaven that contained both the unclean and the clean, animals and birds of every living thing. Well, this is what we had in Noah's Ark. We had some of the unclean and some of the clean. So if the Gentiles were considered unclean and the Jews were considered clean, then we have the clean and the unclean, and both enter the kingdom of God by believing in Him. Now in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, when the Lord's talking about the resurrection of the dead, and talking about that if Messiah has not been raised, then there is no hope. But if He has been raised, then we have this hope. And starting in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 38, But God giveth it a body, as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There's a natural body and there's a spiritual body. And so it's written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam, Messiah, was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit, that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy, that's Adam. The second man is the Lord from heaven, the Messiah, Yeshua. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy, and is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. So, in other words, God created all creation. And when this glorious resurrection and the return of the Lord comes and he restores all things, this, this bondage of this death is going to be swallowed up in victory. So, he's talking about that we can't go in this corrupted state. We have to be changed in order to be in the heavenly kingdom. And God is the one who produces this. And he goes on to say in verse 51, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound. And the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that's written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us victory through our Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach of Nazareth, Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So right before he tells us the mystery of the resurrection of the dead, he's telling us that there's four kinds of flesh and that flesh cannot inherit in the way that we are the kingdom of God until we're changed into the incorruptible state. And, and that's going to happen at the resurrection of the dead and rapture of 
the living believers. So when the Lord comes to reign, it will be like dwelling with God in the Garden of Eden all over again, and he will remove the curse of death once and for all off of the whole earth, and everything in creation will be restored to its former glory. And there's some animal howling in the background. <laughs> we know that Messiah Yeshua, in his second coming, comes on a white horse, and those of the armies of heaven that are following him, the saints follow him on white horses. So we know there's horses in heaven, and there's every other thing that he created. Revelation 19, verse 11, And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. And his eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Psalm 84, 2. My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. Yes, the sparrow! hath found an house, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young. Even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will still be praising thee. Selah. God allows the birds to nest at his house and lay her eggs. Now we love our pets, we love our animals, we love our birds, and we love all God's creatures in creation, I mean. He says, We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Behold, let us love one another, for love is of God. And every one that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And so God loves his creation. He created everything for his own pleasure. So, of course, it will be delivered from the bondage of death. And we can have peace knowing that our beloved treasured animals and pets are going to be with the Lord. He's going to restore us together. And that is just such a beautiful picture of being back at the Garden of Eden or an Eden-like state after God removes the curse. So, of course, your pets are going to be with you in heaven. Of course, God's animals are going to be there because he is love and he loves them and created them for his own pleasure. Just think of all the colors of bird feathers, the different types of birds like hummingbirds, blue jays, robins, doves, different kinds. And God created their colors and their bird songs and gave them flight. God also gave the animals beautiful fur coats with all patterns and designs. And God thought of everything and he said it was good. So why wouldn't it be in heaven with us? This is just one more thing to hope for, to look forward to. And I just pray for anybody that's lost their beautiful pet that God would heal your heart and comfort you with these words.